this is the second of two videos in which we will define the terms we use to describe the different igneous rocks. In this video we will focus on the terms that we use for extrusive igneous rocks. Once again, these terms are all related to how the igneous rocks have formed and we will relate this to the igneous textures that we observe. In this video we will just be looking at these terms here that are used to describe extrusive igneous rock. Extrusive igneous rock can take a few forms, including crystalline, fragmented, glassy and vesicular. Crystalline extrusive igneous rock forms when molten rock spills out onto the Earth's surface. This formation process means that we have much smaller crystals due to the very quick cooling of the molten rock. We often get this from lava flows or mid-ocean ridges where the lava is able to pour out onto the surface of the earth and not do so explosively. This type of formation creates anaphanitic rock, which is the opposite of phaneritic, which means the crystals are too small to be seen. Here are two examples of an anaphanitic rock. Basalt here forms when molten mafic lava pours out onto the earth's surface and rhyolite forms when, less commonly, felsic lava pours out onto the earth's surface and cools quickly. Fragmented igneous rock forms when you have explosive volcanic eruptions, which usually involve a felsic magma exploding onto the earth's surface. This type of rock is called a pyroclastic, as it is associated with pyroclastic flows which occur when you have explosive eruptions. Pyroclastic rock contains angular fragments of blasted rock, fragments of rapidly cooled lava and volcanic ash. These types of igneous rocks also have very small crystals because they have cooled so quickly. The two main types of pyroclastic igneous rock are volcanic breccia and tuff. Here we can see the volcanic breccia is made up of angular pieces of blasted rock surrounded by what we'd assume to be lava or volcanic ash, gluing these pieces of blasted rock together. Tuff is different to volcanic breccia it is, as it is mostly made up of volcanic ash, gluing some smaller chunks of blasted rock together. Glassy igneous rock forms when molten rock cools even more quickly. For example, glassy rock will form when a lava flow flows straight into the sea and the molten rock is quenched. This means that the rock will cool so quickly that no crystal structure is able to form at all. And the glassy igneous rock has a similar atomic structure to glass itself. This type of rock is called hollow haline Hollow haline rock often exhibits conchoidal fractures, as we can see in this sample here. A few examples of extrusive igneous rock are obsidian and tachylite. Obsidian is often called volcanic glass, because as you can see, it looks a lot like shattered glass. Tachylite, while it doesn't look like glass, still has the atomic structure similar to glass. This tachylite has a structure within it called vesicles. Another example of glassy rock is pumice and scoria. These rocks, while they don't look like glass, are categorised as glassy because they have also cooled so quickly such that their atomic structure is similar to that of glass. However, scoria and pumice can further be described as vesicular rocks, just like our tachylite. Vesicles are small bubble holes in the rock and these form when a molten mix has a large amount of volatile gas in it and when the magma reaches the surface and the rock solidifies very quickly as the gas is being released, this leaves bubble holes in the rock. Pumice is a felsic vesicular rock while scoria is a mafic vesicular rock. The last term we will have a look at today is hypocrystalline. Hypocrystalline rock is a partially crystalline rock where the crystals are embedded in a glassy matrix. This type of rock indicates that the magma has undergone two stages of cooling, intrusive and then extrusive. The crystals formed when the magma was underground and cooling slowly. Then the molten rock was ejected onto the surface and cooled very quickly, creating the glassy matrix. 
Here is a quick list of all the terms we have used in this video today. In the next video, I will just be classifying many different igneous rocks using these terms.